everyone. This is the video that goes with chapter seven, the chapter on cognitive development in preschool children, um, sort of the three to seven year old age range. Um, and children at this stage are starting to learn, you know, much more about what's going on around them. Um, and Piaget in particular was interested in the kinds of mistakes children made, um, the way that, uh, that their mistakes told us uh, about how they were thinking and how they were thinking not just with less information than an adult, but at a very different stage. Um, it was a qualitatively different way of, or is a qualitatively different way of thinking. Um, two things um, that uh, Piaget talked about in the pre-operational stage, remember that these operations, pre-operational, concrete operational, formal operational, the next three stages for Piaget, um, have to do with operating on the environment in some way. And so being able to mentally reverse a task, to be able to think about something and think about possibilities in different ways. Um, for preschoolers in the pre-operational stage, they haven't mastered mental operations yet, but they will by the end of this stage. Um, they have difficulty with things like centration. Um, they will center on one aspect of, a, of an issue and fail to notice other aspects of it, so they'll center in on one thing. Um, they also have a hard time with reversibility, so being able to mentally reverse a task. I mean, ask a preschooler who has uh, lost their jacket. Um, where, you know, where did you lose your jacket? They have no idea. Um, well, when did you last have it? And that requires you to sort of mentally reverse your day and think about when you last have it. I mean, we do it as adults as well. Um, if we've misplaced our iPhone or if we've misplaced our wallet, um, we sort of mentally go back to, well, where did I last have it? And then what are the things that I've done since then? So we can do it pretty effortlessly, but for children, it's a complicated task. Um, it requires some brain power that they don't 100% uh, have yet. Um, and so they're working through um, how, those, how those problems can be solved using those kinds of things. Um, another theory that comes in in this chapter, and we don't talk about it, we talk about it in this chapter and in the middle childhood um, chapter, and that's uh, Vygotsky. Um, and Vygotsky was influential in educational psychology. Um, and what he said was, or his theory is, um, that children work best in this hypothetical zone of proximal development where, and not just children, but um, any learner. So you're a learner, I'm a learner. Uh, we work best when what we're trying to learn is a little bit um, too difficult for us, um, but we could do it with assistance or we could do it with some, what he called scaffolding. Um, but, uh, but it's not too easy for us, right? So you don't want to be bored, you don't want to be overwhelmed. That sweet spot where you're sort of working through and starting to discover things for yourself um, is what, um, is what uh, not, excuse me, what Vygotsky was interested in. Um, so the zone of proximal development is one of the terms uh, for his theory. Um, another one is that, that concept of scaffolding, where um, you, you might be playing with a child and trying to help them learn something, but instead of just teaching it to them and saying, here's the information, I hope you remember it, um, to help them discover things and say, well, what if you did this and what if you did that and let the child do it. So you provide the scaffolding rather than providing the knowledge. Um, and that allows the child to make discoveries and you know, be active in their own learning. Um, and they'll retain things better, they'll learn more things, um, and they'll have more fun and they'll be more engaged with it. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to talk about in this video was theory of mind. Um, and children um, initially don't have a theory of mind. And theory of mind refers to understanding what somebody else is thinking, taking their perspective and understanding that they might hold a false belief because they don't have the same information that you do. Um, so the very young children think that uh, whatever they know, you know as well because you're super smart. Um, and so if you ask them a question like who, um, who ate the last cookie, um, they'll, you know, they can't really lie to you because they assume that you know the answer to it. Um, it also be, it becomes interesting when you're trying to interview children if you need information from them, say if they're a, a witness to a crime or you know, in some way you need them to, to give you the information. If you ask them the same question twice, there's something called a response bias. So um, if you ask them, you know, um, did you break the cookie? And they say no. And then you ask them later on, did you break the cookie? They sort of think to themselves, well, the only reason grown-ups ask the same question twice is if you got it wrong the first time. Um, and so that response bias um, uh, influences them and causes them sometimes to change their answer, making it seem like they didn't know the answer, but when in reality, the answer they gave first is probably the answer that they think is correct. 
Um, now, as children get older and they develop a theory of mind, that's when they start to understand that if you weren't there and you didn't see them take the cookie, um, then you don't know it. Um, and that's where they can start to deceive you. So there's an article in this week's reading about deception in children and how it's actually a sign of a cognitive advance um, rather than something bad. I mean, it's like obviously we don't want kids deceiving us all over the place, um, but when they start to do that, that shows that they're moving to a different level where they are understanding that other people can have different beliefs than they do. So there are a couple of short videos um, with some experimental um, methods um, that we use to assess theory of mind in children. I hope you'll find them interesting. Um, and next week we'll talk more about language development, which is the last um, unit within uh, chapter seven. So have a good week. Bye.